everybody, I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're at Frankfurt Music Messa 2013 at the Taurus Amplification booth with Matt. And Matt, you guys have a few new offerings. So what we heard first was the Taurus Stomp Head 4. Is that what it's called, Stomp Head 4? Yeah, this, this one basically is called 4SL, 4.SL, because we have uh, also 4.HG, which, which would be much more for metal players, because it's high gain. Uh, and this one is much more classical version of the amplifier. Uh, so this is basically a preamp and a power amp in one. Basically, it's a guitar head, yeah. but you can stomp on it, so it's stomp head. <laughs> That's where the name came, and uh, it works pretty much like every other classical full tube amplifier that has 50 or 70 or 40 watts, uh, and you can use it in, in in the traditional way. And a lot of people, uh, when when they say it for the first time, they said, "Oh, what a nice preamp." What kind of stomp box do you have inside? Oh, it has the tubes, you know. Yeah, and it's when 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 we are trying to to uh, teach them that it's not a preamp, you know. It's it's a whole amplifier and it has 70 watts of power and it it, it acts and sounds pretty much the same like any other other pro full tube amplifier. They are starting to wondering what was going on, you know. How how come that amplifier that sounds this in this way weighs only four kilos, you know? And this is why we think this, this, this kind of an amp may be a game changer for, for future. Now the power amp, is, are the tubes in the power amp at all or is it a digital power amp? Uh, this one has two tubes and um, first of them is attached to the preamp and second one um, is managing a uh, power amp, amp, amplifier. Uh, power amplifier is based on solid state. Uh, but it has much more power than the 70 watts, so we have no uh, distortions or any other feedback from the solid state. Uh, and it's managed by the uh, small tube in this way that basically th this amp act acts exactly like a full tube amplifier, so it's, it responds for the load and, and uh, frequency of the speakers. Uh, and the response is active exactly like in full tube amps. So now you were, you were talking earlier about the power amp section and how it's switchable between different wattages. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty simple, you know, because uh, if you're using cabinet that is loaded with uh, four or eight ohms, you can switch in between um, basically three modes of power. You can have 70, you can have 40, if 70 is too much for, for the cabinet. And then you can use also studio mode uh, that will give you four or seven watts, so it will be always ten times less. Um, exception is 16 uh, ohms cabinet, uh, then you have only 50 or five watts. Okay, so there are basically two channels, each with uh, three band EQ and a drive control yeah. and then master volume. And then you've got a boost circuit that you can use on either one, is that right? Yeah, yeah, boost is attached to master section, so it's it, it works in the same way with both both channels. You, it, what's important, basically, you have two channels but three sounding modes because uh, clean channel also have crunch knob, uh, and it's uh, it it can be turned off on or off by by the foot switch. So basically, you have three voicings: clean, crunch, and lead. And then you have also boost that can will increase uh, the volume if you will set it like this with, with, with master control because it to increase the volume by the boost you you need to uh, give give it give more boost than, than master uh, and there, there will be the difference the balance in between those two but also uh, it acts like there is less compression when you turn on the boost so for solo things you know uh, it will give you uh, a little slightly different feeling of of, 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 of the strings and, and the neck. It's basically a matter of what you feel, not exactly what you hear, but it will be even more full tube if you if if you'll uh, use the boost. Okay. Now we've talked a bit about all the features. Let's hear a few different sounds like the the clean channel and then lead and maybe the boost. Yeah, of course. Let let's start with the clean channel. So it's it should be uh, Quite transparent. I That's guess. on your the neck pickup of yeah, your. We have the neck pickup, and as far as I can see, it's SH2 from Seymour Duncan. Now, what kind of guitar is this, anyway? Yeah, this is a Polish guitar made by, uh, by Mayo Guitars. Yeah, custom shops made by hand in in, in Poland. 
in the same, basically in the same spot that that Taurus is also based. So we are a kind of allied companies. Okay, so I interrupted you. You were playing on the neck pickup, clean sound. You want to play a couple different combinations of pickups on that? Yeah, yeah. Basically, let's let let's uh, go with with the neck pickup once again. Then we right. can split the coils, so we have a kind of a single. Then we can go with two pickups. That's really clean, crystalline. Yeah, it should be like this. And we will go with the bridge pickup. We can also try to split it. It should be like, you know, you should be able to do the, the, all the funk stuff also. Uh, next, uh, maybe not channel, but but voicing mode would be uh, crunch mode. So we have a knob for, for crunch, and then we can turn it on by, by the foot switch. Uh, and it should be like a crunch, so... Now I'm uh, in the bridge position. Uh, it is uh, Seymour Duncan SH4, so pretty classical pickup. The same with uh, the neck position. And maybe with the switched, uh, split, split it, uh, coils. Sounds really good. I should mention before we forget, we're hearing it through a 212 cabinet. What are the speakers in that? Uh, it's a classical uh, Celestion Vintage 30, so basically it's... Vintage 30s, okay. All right, so how about the lead channel? Yeah, as I said before, uh, at the beginning, the, this amp should sound like, in, in our opinion, should sound like a classical constructions, you know. Um, um, so it's not very overdriven. Although I think it may also be used for hard rock stuff and this kind of things. For now, we have uh, only half of, of the drive and all knobs set to, to middle position, so it will be like. But of course, we can start to search something more heavy metal and maybe. Uh, decreasing mids a little bit will also let us to more more um, bases basically. So what? Uh, no, it sounds good, man. So how about when you push the drive all the way up? Can we hear that? Yeah, let's see. It's not a high gain, so. But still, I think... It's really versatile. All right, so you guys have two other pedals on here that are new for you. Should we go to the Dexter next? It's an Octaver? Yeah, yeah. This is, an, uh, this is basically the first piece. And the second is with the with the bass stack here here at the booth. Uh, I mean, there's only two of them right now. It's yeah, that new. Yeah, it's, it's that new. Basically, we, we have finished this those two just a few days ago. It will have probably some changes on the paintings uh, because we are considering to, to, to change the names of, of the knobs for uh, not from low and high octave to plus one and minus one. But we will see. It. Basically, you have. Uh, I need to I need to tell a few things about it uh, before we have a level, uh, so we can adjust the level with October to the level w w without it, uh, and then we have minus one and plus one octave. Um, first knobs for for the octaves would be um, uh, amount of, of the uh, added uh, sounding soundings, uh, and each uh, of them has its own filter, so we call it range. Uh, I will show it how, how it works. Let's start with the low one, maybe. I need to adjust the volume. And now it's in a full shape, but uh, with the range 
uh, now I can change the uh, change the uh, shape of, of of the added octave, low octave. So now it's more flat, and it's uh, it works perfect with the bass guitar if you have five strings on it. But it also can be heard with the guitar. Oh, so you're saying this is basically sort of like a wet, dry mix of the octave versus the dry signal? Or am I no, misunderstanding? No, no, no. no, it's a kind of a filter okay. for the added octave. So if there is... It's adjusting the EQ curve of yeah, the octave yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically you don't change the uh, dry signal. You just uh, you are just sh yeah, shaping the, the wet, wet, uh, wet signal. Let's do the same thing with the high octave, so I will launch it in its natural position. As you can hear, uh, there is an octave of the sound and also for, for the harmonics that are into the sound, because sound is not just one, um, one thing, but it's, it, it's uh, uh, some of, of, of different uh, uh, things. And sometimes it's better to use range for, for the high sounds. So uh, the guitar does not sound like you know Chinese instrument. Of course you may uh, you if you want it, it to be really shrill or whatever, or you can make it a little more mild. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes it's not necessary to use all those really high sounds in this octave. And let's use two of them, maybe, with the with their natural sh shape. Sort of a synthy sound, huh? Yeah, yeah. You may go to, to something like like a synth with it. Okay, and last but not least, well, we're going to hear one more and then you'll show us another one that's not plugged in. But So we've got the Taurus guitar engine. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, basically, um, when we did the uh, first amp and then, and then second and another one, we felt it would be good to also uh, make something that would be less expensive but would uh, be um, would give an opportunity to take the Taurus sound to the other amplifiers. So that is why we did the preamp. Um, it has two channels, so it works pretty much like like uh, most of these kind of devices that are available. Available, so you can turn it on. So, is it sort of like the Taurus, except without the power amp? Pretty much, yeah. But it has no tubes on it, uh, so you know there are there will be a differences. And the second thing is that if if, uh, if you produce, if you are making a preamp that is always attached to the same power amp. You can do it much better, you know, because you can adjust it to the power amp that that is basically. Yeah, you can tailor it to work yeah. optimally with that power amp. Yeah, and and if you are doing the preamp that will be used with several different amplifiers, uh, then you cannot, you know, you you need to prepare it in a way that it would work good with maybe not perfect, but. Uh, but in decent way with any amp, you know. Sort of maybe make the controls a little bit more wide-ranging and flexible to accommodate different conditions with other power amps. Yeah, and also uh, the matter of sensitivity is also important. So, let's hear that. Yeah. Uh, after switching on, we have two channels basically. So we have clean one. Let's maybe let's turn it off at the beginning. So now we have clean sound of the amplifier and then clean sound of, of the uh, preamp. Pre so it's it's uh, a little bit, you know, turned on.
then we can also change this first channel that is basically clean to a driven channel also. From crunch to even a quite powerful lead. Um, second channel is only driven. It keeps pretty much the same shape like, like the amplifiers, but there will be always difference, you know. What, what is, I think, the most important thing in this device is that you can mix those two channels also. So if we are go, uh, go to the mix mode, uh, then channel uh, LED is not active anymore and the device just works or, or doesn't work. And uh, now we have quite a new opportunities to mix the, the signal. So we can use, let's say, two, two drives. Uh, the first channel will be just, just the add. Uh, I will set it as a, as a contoured channel with a lot of drive on it. So it, it will go like this. And I don't like this kind of a sounding, basically. But if you, if you will start with the, the uh, The basic basic channel sounds like this, and then I can I can add a little more of the contoured sound. So the shape is you know totally different at the at the moment, and so you can uh, you can have a nice evening playing with this device and searching for a different you know driven sounds for. You can use it also as a booster or, or traditional uh, pedal effects for for the cool that you, that you have already. Now, what are we? What's uh, since this is not a power amp itself, is it getting power from the Taurus stomp head here? Uh, now it's plugged, you know, just at the input. But you you, you could also plug it in into a return of of, of uh, the effect loop, so you could just use just the power amp. Now we have basically two preamps after one after each other uh, one after another sorry so but this one so this is going you're going into this and yeah. then and then we are going getting power from this but no signal from this no no uh, basically this setup is is made like this i'm going to the preamp at the first position and then i go into the clean channel of the amplifier okay. so we have basically two preamps but the clean channel is uh, set it to, to middle positions with all the knobs. So, okay. All right, Matt. So we mentioned this earlier. This is pretty much a smaller version of the big Taurus Stomp Head Four. Tell us about it. Yeah, there are two new pieces. So this one is a new version of 4SL. Uh, it's called Stomp Head uh, Two because it has two foot switches, uh, and also there is a, this same kind of an amp with a high gain version. So uh, le more compressed and with more dr drive inside with the dri driven channel. Same basic knobs, three band EQ, drive, volume. Yeah, basically yes, but you cannot, you know, t turn on the crunch in the clean channel with the foot switch. So you can all you can use crunch mode, uh, but you need to choose in between uh, clean channel or, or crunch channel in in this one. Uh, what's important, it, ha it has two uh, power options, so it can be 20 for, uh, 25 or 60 watts. Uh, it will adjust to the speaker uh, load itself, so you don't need to switch anything, you know. To, the resistance, okay. Yeah, the resist it, it has an effect loop. Uh, yeah, yeah, this one is, is uh, basically um, in, in both power supplier versions, so you can just, you know, if you, use, if you are going to use it in stays, and then fly to Europe, you just have to switch it for, for European power supply. Awesome. It's got a fan built in there to keep it yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This kind of, uh, of, of, of the power amp uh, should be cooled by the fan, so all stuff has, has the, the fans. Matt, where can people go to find out about all the pedals we saw and heard today? Well, uh, all those new things, as well as those that are available at the moment, uh, you can find at our allied company that is named Osiamo.com. So maybe you could. O S I A M O, Osiamo.com. Yeah, your perfect spelling, you know. <laughs> All right, Matt, thanks so much for letting us hear this stuff. Have a great show. Yeah, thank you very much. It was very nice to meet you guys and you guys also. Thanks. I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com.